Hi, I'm Billy from Quicksolve. In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know to create your own custom materials, masking patterns, design your own smart materials, and how to master the Dynamask Editor. So let's get started. A basic material is a single layer base material. It consists of one layer per document with a set scan based reflectance value and a tileable texture applied as a Photoshop pattern. To create a basic material, click the Add a Material button. This will open the material browser. Here you can choose from a variety of included materials as well as the ones you've made yourself. You can change the reflectance value of the base layer by clicking the Edit Reflectance button. This will bring up Photoshop's color picker. In the Albedo document, you can select whatever color you like, and in other documents, you either have the same freedom or a strict grayscale, depending on the specific map type. You can change the visibility of the base layer by changing the opacity value. You can change the blend mode of the base layer by clicking this button. You can also change the properties of the texture overlay. To edit the size of the texture, change the scale value. To change the visibility of the texture, change the texture intensity value. And lastly, you can change the blend mode of the texture as well. All of these properties can be fully customized individually and non-destructively on all documents at any time. To create a custom material, you need a set of tileable textures. For a basic material setup, you need an albedo or diffuse texture to define the diffusion of your material. A gloss or roughness texture to define the differences in the microsurface of your material, like damage or differences in smoothness. And a normal map to define height variations on the material that would not be present on the mesh. Optionally, you can also use a specular texture to define how much light gets directly reflected and never penetrates the surface layer of your material. A texture is rarely needed to define the specularity, unless your material has both conductive and non-conductive elements defined by the same texture map. To create a basic material, click the Import a Custom Material button. This will bring up a menu where you can import textures and set reflectance values for each specific input. The details of your texture will be separated from the average color of the document, which can be changed both when the material is initially created and at any point after it's applied. The material I'm going to create will be a marble material, based on some photos I took. Select the diffuse texture, press the checkered box on the Albedo tab. This will bring up an explorer window where you can select your file as you would in any other application. The small box on the right side of the tab represents the reflectance value. To change it, click it and it will open Photoshop's color picker where you can choose any color you like. As you can see, Dido has chosen the average color for my input map. I'm pretty happy with the color, so I'll keep it. Next, I'll define the specular color of my material. As the entire material will be made of rock, which is non-conductive, a solid color will define for this input, and I don't need a texture to define any differences in the specularity. Now I will choose a gloss texture to add some scratches and imperfections to my material. I will also set the reflectance value to a pretty high number, like 90, since I want the surface to look very polished. Finally, I'll add a normal map to define some surface height irregularities and press create. An explorer window will pop up. Here you can give your material a name and save it wherever you like. I'll just stick with the standard folder for now. Saving your material here will put it under the Custom tab in Dido's Material Browser, located at the very top. You can also create your own subfolders in here if you like. When you click Save, a preview image will be generated, and your material will be saved as an XML file in the chosen location, along with a PSB file for every texture.
All right, looks pretty good, but I want to customize it a little bit further with some more advanced tweaks. To do so, you can directly edit the material XML file that Dido created and poke around the numbers a little bit to make permanent changes to the material. Built-in tools for this are coming, and this step is optional and aimed towards those of you who are interested in building your own custom base library. The reflectance is the color of the respective map, represented with a hex value. Opacity is the visibility of the base layer, represented in percent. Blend is the blend mode of the base layer. Material intensity is the visibility of the texture overlay. And material blend is the blend mode of the texture overlay. To figure out what I want to edit in my material, I usually try some things out in Dido and then transfer the changes I like to the XML file. I want the texture to be a bit more visible in the albedo, so I'll raise the texture intensity to 60%. I want the color to be a little bit darker, so I'll change the reflectance value of the base layer to a slightly darker color. I also copied the hex value from Photoshop's color picker so that I can paste it into my XML file. I also want the scratches to be a little bit more subtle, so I'll lower the texture intensity in the gloss document. After the document is saved, the changes will be applied, and your material will look the way you specified every time you create it from this point on. You can also directly edit the texture files of your material by opening the PSB files in Photoshop and perform any changes you like. Masking patterns are used to add texture details while masking between materials. We have defined masking patterns as a separate thing from the basic materials as they are intended for a different purpose, but technically they are the same. If you don't know what a masking pattern is used for yet, it will become clear in the next chapter of this tutorial. To create a masking pattern, click the Add a Custom Material button. A masking pattern only uses the Albedo texture input. Click the checkered box on the Albedo tab to browse for a texture file. The textures used to create masking patterns are grayscale images, as they don't need any color information. When you have selected the texture you want to use, press Create Material and you will be greeted by the same window as before. Give your pattern a name. Click Save and Dido will take care of the rest. The Dynamask Editor is a masking solution that uses your pre-baked base input maps and textures in different combinations to generate details like wear on isolated edges dirt accumulated in narrow spaces, sun bleached on exposed areas, or anything else you could define with your pre-baked base maps or texture. Any changes in Dynamask sits below the paint deformation from 3D and can be non-destructively edited before painting, when painting, and after painting. To open the Dynamask editor, press the Edit Dynamask button on a material. Before the Dynamask editor is started, you will be asked if you want to run it in full shaded mode or not. If full shaded mode is chosen, your mesh will be displayed with all texture maps active, showing your material as it would look when you accept the mask. If you select no, 3D will only show the mask on your mesh, which is a little bit faster. I usually go for the mask only, or do masking without 3D active. When you start masking, you have a couple of options. You can choose one of the blank backgrounds. Start with one of the presets and tweak the settings to your liking. Or create a fully custom mask. To create your own custom mask, check the Show Advanced box to reveal the inner workings of the Dynamask Editor. The masking works by using your pre-baked base maps and textures in a hierarchy controlled by blend modes, so if you have prior experience with Photoshop, this will look familiar to you. 
When I do my masks, I usually start with one of the black or white backgrounds. I use the black background if I want to add detail, and the white background if I want to remove detail. But of course there are exceptions to the rule. All inputs in the Dynamask editor uses pre-baked base maps except for the two texture slots at the top and the mask slot at the bottom meant for masking patterns and basic materials to break up the mask or add detail. On the left side of every input there is a checkbox that activates or deactivates the input type, and a slider that controls the opacity of the input method. On the right side of every input you'll find two buttons, one that inverts the texture, and one that sets the blend mode of the texture. On the far right you'll find an arrow, if you click it you'll see the options for the specific input. The texture inputs is used to add or remove detail from your mask by using materials or masking patterns. The ambient occlusion input is used to define areas that are exposed or unexposed to ambient light. The curvature input is used to define differences in shape across the mesh, like sharp corners and cavities. The displacement input is used to define height variations not present on the mesh. If no pre-baked displacement map is present, Dido will use the curvature map from the base creator for this input. The object space direction input is used to define the orientation of the face normals on your mesh. The gradient direction input is used to define direction on your mesh going from one side to the other, with the ability to define any direction on the model. There is also a collection of post-processing options found at the bottom for some final tweak ability. I usually reserve these to the very end of my editing, and only use them if I can't achieve the result I'm after with the standard options. Now, let's do some examples. The first example I'm going to create will be a rusted steel. As you can see, I have created a layer of rust on top of a steel layer, and I will use the Dynamask editor to reveal the metal underneath. For this setup, I'll start with the black background, since I want to add the rust on top of the steel, effectively adding white wherever I want the rust to be visible. I'll start with enabling the gradient direction input, since I want more rust to be accumulated on the top of the object than at the bottom. This time, the standard settings will do fine. Next, I'll add a texture to give the mask some rust spots. I usually use the secondary texture input before the first one. This is because I want the flexibility to add a secondary texture above my primary texture to break up repetition if needed, and to add some variety. I will choose one of the masking patterns. Masking patterns are more optimized for masking than basic materials, as they only have one texture assigned to them instead of three or more, which makes them easier to tweak and faster to load. In this case, the default blend mode works well as it adds both black and white information at the same time, but I will increase the visibility of the albedo layer as well as the contrast to make the details pop more. If a basic material was chosen instead of a masking pattern, you would have a visibility slider for each texture assigned to that material. I'll now load a texture into the first slot. I'll set the blend mode of this one to multiply, as I only want to add black information, and tweak the brightness and contrast until I have a result I like. That's it for this one, so let's accept the mask. Next example is going to be a damaged painted metal. This time I've created a layer of paint on top of a steel layer, and I will mask paint away to reveal the metal underneath. For this setup, I want to remove paint wherever damage has occurred by adding black, so I'll start with a solid white background. Damage mostly occurs on exposed areas and places that collide on objects like corners and edges, so I'll start by enabling the curvature input to create some edge wear. I'll set the blend mode to multiply to only add black information, and then tweak the settings. Each slider represents a specific edge in cavity thickness. So for instance, when you want to create soft dirt accumulating in cavities, you want to use the bottom sliders to keep the accumulation nice and soft. And conversely, if you want to create sharp edge wear, you want to use the top sliders to keep the edges crisp and defined. You can also set how you want your curvature to be filtered in the mode dropdown. The options are cavities only, edges only, both at the same time, or an unfiltered option. 
I'll enable the ambient occlusion input and use it to reduce the edge wear on exposed areas that are more protected and less likely to take a hit. I'll set the blend mode to screen to only add white information and tweak it a bit. Next, I'll add a masking pattern to the secondary texture slot to create some scratches. I'll set the blend mode to multiply to only add black information and then tweak the settings. Lastly, I'll add a masking pattern to the first texture slot to break up repetition and give the wear a less uniform look. I'll set the blend mode to screen to only add white information and make sure the masking pattern has a scale setting that doesn't match the first one, resulting in unique artifacts across the entire texture map. The last example will be some accumulated dirt. Since I'm adding the dirt on top of the metal, I'll start with a black background to add white wherever I want the dirt to be visible. I'll enable the ambient occlusion input. This will be the primary detail of this mask since I want the dirt to be gathered in crevices and narrow spaces. I'll set the blend mode to screen so it only adds white information, then tweak it. The final detail will be a masking pattern to break up the mask and to add some random splashes of dirt on other areas of the model. If you want to save your masking settings as a preset, click the Save as New Preset button. This will open an explorer window. Give your preset a name and click Save. Your preset will now be available in the Masking Presets menu and can be reused on any material. A smart material is a flexible material that can consist of anything from a single basic material with a few tweaks, to an entire collection of layered materials with varied surface properties and dynamic details such as wear, weathering and decay. A good set of smart materials can dramatically speed up workflows and keep a consistent look throughout larger projects being worked on by a team of artists. Creating your own smart materials is really simple, so let's give it a try. Before you get going, you have to think of how the material you want to create is structured. It usually makes sense to build the material as it is constructed in real life. For example, to create something like this old rusted painted metal, I would start with the metal base layer, add some rust to the steel, add the paint, and then add some dirt. But as with everything else there are exceptions, with solid materials like plastics, I sometimes add damage on top of the base layer and in some cases an extra layer might be needed to create detail that could not be done otherwise. Initially, the process of creating a smart material will be just like what we did in previous examples. The material I'm going to create will be a damaged painted metal. I'll start by adding a steel base layer. I change the name of the layer by double clicking the text. This will keep the smart material neat and organized. I clear the texture overlay on the steel layer as it will not make any visual difference after the paint is applied. This is an optional step and is done for optimization upon recreation only. The speed of which a material is created is directly determined by how many things needs to be loaded. I create the paint layer. This time I'll use one of the steel materials because I like the texture overlay that it comes with. I 
I repurpose the metal by changing the specular value to something more common and a non-conductive material, and I make sure the visibility of the specular texture overlay is set to zero. I tweak the texture overlay settings on all documents to get the look I'm after. I changed the gloss value to give the paint a somewhat duller look. I mask the paint to generate the worn look I'm after, using curvature and two masking patterns along with ambient occlusion to reduce some of the damage in protected areas. I add a clean layer to create some shallow scratches in the paint that doesn't penetrate down to the metal. A clean layer is a material with a reflectance value, but no texture overlay. I lower the visibility in all documents to zero, except for the gloss. I change the gloss value to a higher number to make the scratches shinier than the base paint. I mask the layer using two masking patterns, one to add scratches and one to break up the detail of the mask and make it more irregular. I add the final detail, which will be a layer of dirt. I mask the dirt with ambient occlusion to place it in narrow spaces where it would naturally accumulate and add a masking pattern to break it up and add some mud spots. And lastly, I raise the bump value of the paint and the dirt by a few percent to give them some height. Smart materials can be made from single layers or groups. As this is a multi-layered material, I need to group it. To group your layers, select everything you want to include and click the Group Selected button. This will put your layers in a folder. The name of the folder will be saved along with your material layers. To rename it, double-click the text. To save a smart material, click the Save a Smart Material button. An explorer window will pop up. The name of the material will be the name of the selected folder or layer by default, but can be changed to anything you like. Just as with the basic materials, you can save them wherever you want, but saving them in a default folder will put them under the custom tab in the Smart Material browser. When you click Save, a thumbnail will be generated, and your material will be ready to use on any future asset.
Smart materials are flexible and powerful tools. I encourage all of you to build your own library of them to add your own touch to your finished product. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching.